This is the consequence of the separation of judicial, legislative and executive powers prescribed by the Constitutional Reform Act 2005. Um, the Act for the first time recognizes expressly both the rule of law and the principle of the independence of the judiciary, and the separation will mark that. It will make the Supreme Court visible. It will make it um, separately identifiable. We shan't get the confusion which I noted in the Spanish press at the time of the Pinochet affair between the House of Lords in its legislative capacity and in its judicial capacity. What does this mean for the House of Lords and the role of Parliament more generally? It means for Parliament that um, Parliament will no longer have um, an appellate function in respect of um, individuals, companies or the government. Uh, in that sense it will cease to be the High Court of Parliament. Um, it means for the Law Lords uh, that um, under the Act, while we are serving, uh, we can't sit or vote in the House of Lords, although of course we remain peers. Uh, as retired Law Lords, um, we would be able to return and take a full part unless there is some more major reform. Uh, in practical terms, um, we shall leave this building, that's the Houses of Parliament, we shall move to a building across Parliament Square, the former Middlesex Guildhall, and uh, that has been elegantly refurbished. I think the last um, activity of the Law Lords in the House of Lords is on the 30th of July. Um, could you tell us about what will be happening uh, in that final week uh, that the Law Lords sit in the House? Yes, uh, we've got a full list of four cases which are being heard from Monday to Thursday. We're reverting to an old tradition, uh, that is to sit in the chamber of the House instead of committee room number one, and uh, that will be, uh, uh, those will be sittings which are open to the public. They um, will uh, culminate uh, uh, with uh, our last judgment, seven of them, given at 4.30 on Thursday. In our case, the last judgment is uh, predictable in timing, and uh, that too will be an event which is open to the public. And after that, our appellate function will cease here. So, so the public can come and um, witness this historic uh, last week of the Law Lords in the House? Very much so. All sittings of the House of Lords uh, are in fact open to the public. Uh, uh, they're not uh, usually videoed. And all sittings of the Supreme Court will be open to the public and we shall have uh, much better f public facilities on uh, the other side of Parliament Square in the new building. So what will happen after the 30th of July? What will happen is, I'm afraid, uh, from our point of view, a lot of packing and moving. Um, the usual uh, vacation business of, um, includes um, writing some judgments, preparing some lectures, and perhaps attending uh, one or two conferences. Um, we've got a full team in place um, headed by a chief executive and a registrar, and uh, they will be commissioning the building. Um, finally, and this may be quite a broad question, but how would you sum up the contribution of law lords to the work of the House of Lords? In the, in the past, I think, um, very significant, uh, even in the legislative area, there are some great names who played a, a major role. Um, in recent years, um, that has very much diminished, especially in connection with anything political. Um, and um, it still remains, um, to this day, um, in the committee sphere. I think that's where the real recent contribution has been. Um, the Consolidation Bills Committee, um, the Privileges Committee, and above all, the European Union Select Committee, on which I sit, uh, I chair one of the subcommittees, Subcommittee E, which scrutinizes European law and institutions. And I have to say, I think that uh, has been a very valuable experience. I think that interchange has given insights into how government uh, and parliament interrelate, um, both with each other and with Brussels, uh, which um, most serving judges haven't had. And if I have one regret about the move, it would be um, the loss of that opportunity. But I have to say that the uh, new Supreme Court is going to offer plenty of new opportunities for outreach, and we have to make sure that we use them, and I'm sure we will.